This video was brought to you by KiwiCo. In my last video, I 3D printed this. No, it's not a flower. I mean, it kind of is. This is the Lily Impeller. It was invented by J. Harmon in 1996. It follows the shape of the golden spiral, and that's the reason why it looks like a lily flower. Hence the name, Lily Impeller. In my last video, I used it as a vortex generator, a water mixer, and a wind turbine. But do you know what I didn't use that as? An impeller. Its name is Lily Impeller, which clearly states that we're talking about an impeller, which also means it should be used as an impeller. But what's an impeller? An impeller, just like a propeller, is a spinning component that generates thrust. The big difference is that a propeller pushes the water backwards, so the boat goes forward, while an impeller sucks the water inwards, so the boat, well, goes forward as well. Propellers and impellers are normally used in boats and airplanes, but since this one was built using the philosophy of Victor Schaubega, the waterbender, well, I should probably use it on a boat. Yeah, let's build a boat. To build a boat, I need a boat, because I won't actually build it. I'm going to 3D print it. So I 3D modeled a simple boat and I 3D printed it using this special filament made by Colorfab, that when it eats up, it expands like foam which means I can reduce the extrusion multiplier and also means the part ends up being much lighter. I had to divide the boat in two parts because it was 70cm long and my printer only goes up to 37cm. The bottom part came out with some defects because I made it too wide for the printer. To fix that, I used glue and screw. Actually, I used screws, plural, but it was cooler to say glue and screw. It sounds like a band's name. After joining the two halves of the boat, I used sandpaper to smooth out the transition. Then I made some more resin to fill up the remaining gaps and I sanded a little more. PLA has a tendency to absorb water like a sponge. So I applied a few coats of resin to make it impermeable. Imp imperme impermeable. So far I had a boat and an impeller, but I needed something to make the impeller rotate so the boat would move forward. I could use an electric motor, but what's the fun in that? If you follow my channel, you probably know there's a special place in my heart for a particular rotating invention. The Tesla Turbine. The Tesla Turbine was invented in 1913 by the one and only Nikola Tesla, to be a steam turbine that would produce electrical power. This turbine is particularly interesting because it has no blades, uses simple circular discs and a boundary layer effect to reach insanely high speeds. I built some Tesla turbines in the past, but I never really gave them a practical application. So I thought to myself, why not combine two inventions from two forward-thinking inventors in one project? So I designed the 40 by 20 mm turbine with 20 half a millimeter in thickness discs and incorporated half a millimeter spacers. I made a circular array of circular spacers to increase the torque a little bit. This might seem like I'm cheating, but it's actually in the original patent. To 3D print the discs, I used my resin 3D printer. After washing them in alcohol and drying them with compressed air, I had to post-cure them with UV light. The problem is that, because of the low thickness, the discs were bending during the curing process. To solve that, I placed an ashtray on top of the discs, to stop the distortion. The ashtray is heavy enough, transparent and has a flat bottom. Also, I could smoke while I waited for the prints to cure. Slap a small. Because I could only feed two discs at a time on the printer, I had to repeat the process 10 times, and that was a lot of cigarettes. Just kidding, I don't smoke cigarettes, I just smoke tomatoes. After inserting the disc on the 3D printed shaft, I cut the piece of M3 threaded rod to serve as the axis. I glued two M3 nuts in place, and ta-da! I had a rotor for the turbine. Next I 3D printed the casing and the lid using the foamy light filament from Colorfab, so the turbine would be as light as possible. This casing has a really thin inlet because we want to turn pressure into speed. After assembling the turbine I tested it using my lungs, because it's a tradition here on the channel. Ok, so guys, listen to this. Jesus. Just the sound was really promising, but I still needed a nozzle. 
So I 3D printed a simple one in resin and I glued it to the turbine. This time I used compressed air at two bars. Using slow motion footage, I calculated a rotating speed of 4700 RPM. Which might seem good for only two bars, but the thing is I also did the same test without the nozzle and the turbine was reaching almost 12,000 RPM. So, something is wrong here. The nozzle is supposed to help increase the speed, not the other way around. So, I 3D printed some more designs including the Dulaval nozzle and I tested them out. And for my complete surprise, the one that worked the best was a straight 2mm circular nozzle. Occam's razor. Simple is better. I had a great turbine that was performing well with just 30 psi of pressure. But I can't really carry a compressor on the boat, can I? Even if I could, that would defeat the point of the project. What I needed was a simple way to store compressed air. A while ago I watched a video from Tom Stanton where he uses soda bottles to store compressed air. He used it on a compressed air engine and it worked pretty well. That seemed like a fairly simple and good idea. So I bought some 2 liter soda bottles and I fitted them with some bicycle valves so I could have a simple way to pump air in. Okay, so here I have a soda bottle and I need to know how many bars I can push into it before it explodes. And to do that, I'm gonna make it explode. Uh, I have a manual pump there and I'll push as much air as I can into the bottle before it ruptures. Uh, when it happens, I should know what's the best pressure. I shouldn't have to say this, but don't try this at home. All right. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe it. The bottle just exploded and then fell off my, my porch. Yeah, I need to go get it. I'm a lucky person, I don't have neighbors. Lars! Okay, so the bottle didn't explode actually. It just, the valve jumped off of the, of the bottle. So I'm gonna test it again. I'm gonna switch this cap for another cap with the valve and I'll try it again. Oh my god! So I couldn't find the bottle after the explosion, and I thought it was because it had been vaporized by the pressure. It was only when I checked my fail attempt at recording the explosion in slow motion that I found out where the bottle was. Now knowing what's the maximum pressure a soda bottle can handle, I filled one up to 6 bars and connected it to my Tesla turbine using a flow controlling valve. Impossible! So I'm going to test the turbine now to see if I can get enough speed to propel the boat. Starting to move. Bare minimum. Right, let's open a little bit more. The only problem of using full throttle is that it ends fast. Okay, let's do this to more bottles. I need more capacity. Yeah! The four bottles are filled with six bars, so I'm gonna give it a test with the turbine to see how long it can, well, power the turbine.
Before I can glue the air tank to the boat, I need a support for the impeller, a support for the turbine, and find a way to link them together. Yeah, it seems like I have some 3D printing to do. I'll be right back. Sponsor time. Children, they are smaller and stupider versions of humans, and it is our job, adults, to make them smarter. School helps a lot, but when the summer comes, they just stare at their phone all day, watching Korean boys dance like walkie waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. There's nothing wrong with watching Korean boys dance, but children are the future, and when the aliens come, well, dancing won't help anyone. To introduce children to science, there's no better option than KiwiCo. They create awesome project kits that expose children to science, technology, engineering, art, and math. STEAM! The kit comes with everything you need and has very well illustrated instructions. It's a great way to stop the eye-burning interaction with screens and substitute it with a healthy project where they can learn and actually make something. Like for example, a set of headphones to listen to Korean boys singing like they have hot potatoes in their mouth. If you want to help out with the aliens and you want to support my channel, you can go to kiwico.com slash Intexa and save $20 by getting the first kit for free. That means no money. The projects were really cool and I had a lot of fun with my sister. Give it a try. Back to the video. <laughs> do a quick test uh, with uh, the compressor. Jesus! <laughs> wow, I wasn't expecting this because I thought the tension from the rubber would slow it down. It's not slowing down, it's going really fast. So, I was just thinking, this is acrylic, right? It's like glass, it's fragile. So, instead of using the saw, which is a pain in the butthole, I could just use a box cutter to make a cut and just break it, right? That should work. I'm gonna try that. Woo! <laughs> it worked! Clean cut! I'm never using that saw again. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. So far so good, but I still need to find a way to remotely control the boat. You should use an Arduino Nano and remotely control the boat using wireless communication modules. It's more work, but this kind of dedication is what makes people click the subscribe button. Don't listen to that idiot. The people watching you are as lazy as you are, and they are counting on you to get an easy solution. Trust me, they will leave a like to show you I'm right. Yeah. 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 So, I bought a cheap RC car and I stole the RC part of it. Of course, I only did that after I had some fun with it. The car already comes with a remote control, wireless communication and driver modules and two motors. One to move the car and the other one to steer. The motors are powered by four AA batteries that total 6 volts. They also don't consume a lot of current. So I kept the motors. After ripping out the entrails of the car, I bought some more supplies. An electro valve to control the flow of air into the turbine and a transistor module to control the electro valve. The transistor was controlled using 6 volts that were powering one of the motors. I soldered everything together and I gave it a test. 
the system worked pretty well and the valve was opening without problems. To steer the boat I kept one of the motors and the back axis of the car. I 3D printed a support for both of them and connected the steering thingy to the axis. Yeah, I don't know how you say it in English. I screwed the steering module to the boat and gave it a test. Okay, everything is connected. Uh, let's see if this works. I'm accelerating. <laughs> it's working, I can't believe it. Oh, gee. And the direction? Well, it's a little bit aggressive, isn't it? As a last touch, I gave a boat a little bit of charisma. With everything tested and ready, it was time to fix the air tank on the boat. But because my camera decided to go to sleep without warning me, well, you're not seeing that. The Tesla boat was ready for testing, and what better place to do it than in the natural habitat of retired people. A lake full of ducks, in the middle of the park. I manually pumped the air tank to 6 bars and gave it a test. It doesn't move like a speedboat, but it has a decent speed. And that is pretty amazing. Just think about it. It's a 3D printed boat that uses a Tesla turbine and the Lily impeller to move and it's controlled by the corpse of an RC car. Next, I went to a river to see if the boat could handle it. This was a really interesting project and I'm really happy that I was able to give a practical application to the Tesla turbine and use the Lily impeller in its original context. It was the first time that I built an RC boat, or any boat for that matter, and I think that with a little bit of creativity, well, I might be able to use the Tesla turbine on an airplane. But that's a story for another video. I know not everyone has a 3D printer at home to replicate projects like this. And that's the reason why in my last video, I promised to give away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a future theme for a video. The winner was GBR, and he suggested that I could make either a supercapacitor rocket or a turbine rocket. Just as promised, I sent him a 3D printer, and here you can see a picture of him standing next to the printer. And thinking... Wait, did he misspell my name again? Ah, uh, come on guys! If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment about an invention that you think deserves to be 3D printed. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, this is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Okay, I cannot end this video without testing the turbine at maximum speed with 8 bars of pressure. The only reason I didn't do it up until now is because I'm pretty sure the turbine will explode. Well, there's only one way to know for sure. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Okay, so I just recorded the turbine at maximum speed in slow motion, but I still don't know the speed because I haven't seen the footage. But no problem, future Joe will put the value here. If you don't believe me that this is the maximum speed for the turbine, and I don't know why you wouldn't believe me, I'm a lucky person, I don't have neighbors. Lars! Well, I'll leave the footage as the outro, so you can calculate it yourself. Bye bye